Wrong. Everyone knows just how important seat belts are. All new vehicles must prove that their belts and anchorages are up to the job of protecting passengers during an accident. That basically means they will not break when a force of three tons is applied to them. But just take a look at the damage to this particular test vehicle. Just goes to show you how important it is to keep them up to standard, which is why, of course, the MOT test is of vital importance. Tom, if these mountains had given way, the consequences would be absolutely awful, wouldn't they? What do you make of this? Well, firstly, it shows how much work the seatbelt has to do and just how important are the minimum safety checks that we do in the MOT test. Now, the MOT test itself, do you test every single seatbelt in the vehicle? That's a very important question and one that's caused some confusion, I might add. Although there is a minimum legal requirement for seatbelts that must be fitted to different vehicles, most manufacturers fit modern vehicles with more than that minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. The MOT test requires that if a seatbelt is fitted, and we'll be talking more about this later, it becomes a testable item. For a tester, the main thing to remember is that if a seatbelt is fitted, test it. OK, so where do we start? I mean these particular examples aren't going to get us very far now, are they? Well, no, Claire, this is a test rig and we've applied huge loads to this, which makes it clear to demonstrate for the purposes of videoing. However, it does give us the opportunity to start seat belts with a section of the manual that deals with prescribed areas. And on this vehicle, those areas have been painted in white, the 30 centimetre radiuses. Now, those areas are really quite extensive, aren't they? Yes, they are. You can see here that because of the way the seat belt's been attached, virtually the whole of the B post is prescribed area. And then, of course, it extends forward from the B post, inner and outer sills, and behind the B post, inner and outer sills. And on this vehicle, because the seat belt buckle is attached to the seat frame, then the seat frame becomes prescribed area, as does every single seat mounting to the floor. So it is a huge prescribed area on this vehicle. So how do you test those prescribed areas then? How do you check them? Well, there's three ways to check, and these have been described in a previous video, Rotten Cars. Firstly, you would look, assess the areas that are prescribed areas, and, and see what you could see, the condition finger thumb pressure, you would feel the strength of the metal. If necessary, use the corrosion assessment tool. Now, it may be that you'll need to carry out an inspection underneath the vehicle, but you would be looking for those defects that are described in the inspection manual. When you say prescribed area, a lot of people think corrosion, but it's more than that. It's deliberate modification, which significantly reduces the original strength. It's excessive corrosion. It's severe distortion or a fracture or inadequate repair to a main load-bearing member or its support panelling within 30 centimetres of the mounting. Now, on this particular vehicle where we've loaded it up, you can see that where the belt mountings are, the metal has really buckled. Mm. If any of those defects I had described had existed on this vehicle, well, I'll leave it to your imagination what the end result might have been. Absolutely. Well, obviously, you check the seat belt itself, don't you? Yes, but we can't do that on this vehicle, so let's move on. OK. So, Tom, this is obviously something more like we'd see in a test station. Yes, it is. And the tester would test each seatbelt fitted as they conduct their interior check during their walk-around routine. So how do you know which seatbelts to test? Oh, the rule's quite simple. If it's fitted, test it. What exactly do you mean by this, Tom? For a belt to be classed as a seatbelt, it needs to relate to a seat. So if the seat's been removed, for instance, in an MPV such as this, then that belt does not qualify as a seat belt, and therefore it does not need to be tested. The tester might want to advise the presenter of any seat belts they didn't need to test. Vehicles with forward-facing seats or side-facing seats, rear-facing seats, whatever. If a seat belt is related to that seat, then it needs to be tested. And if it meets the reason for rejection, it fails. The tester might want to advise the presenter of any belts that did not qualify as seat belts that he checked. 
So basically, every fitted seatbelt becomes a testable item, even if it's above the legal requirements for that vehicle. Exactly right. So what if the vehicle doesn't have enough seatbelts? How would the tester know? Clarification on the minimum legal requirement can be found in the inspection manual. Pages 4 and 5 show the minimum legal requirement for vehicles with not more than eight passenger seats, three-wheeled vehicles, goods vehicles, minibuses, motor caravans and ambulances. Of course, the tester must make sure they're looking at the correct pages. For example, Special Notice January 2001 has replacement pages which have updates referring to motor caravans. Are there different types of seat belts and does it matter what type is fitted where? Uh, yes, there's many different types and sorts of seat belts and it does matter uh, in what combination they're fitted depending on the type of vehicle. And if the vehicle doesn't have its minimum requirement or the right type of seat belts? It fails. Simple as that? Simple as that. Okay Tom, let's get on with the test now. Okay then. So if we start in the front, what exactly are you looking for here? Right, the first thing the test is going to do is check the security of the mountings. Now obviously they can't apply three tonne as we did in the test no. rig. No. So they'll pull all the, the webbing out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pull on the mantis to check the security. Now, prescribed areas, do they play a part here? Yes, they do, and the test is going to have to examine them by looking at them and finger thumb pressure. Now, the test rig that we used showed everything exposed. This is the real world. This vehicle's got lots of covers and panels, but still the tester would check all those areas that would relate to prescribed area. So what else are you looking for that would make it fail? Well, we've talked about the security of the seatbelt mountings. In this particular vehicle, the two bottom mountings go directly into the seat, so they're integral mountings. Okay. And the tester will need to examine the security of the seat and it, the condition of its framework and the condition of all the seat mountings. So what's next? The next thing we do is check the condition of the webbing, the whole of the webbing of the seat belt that we can see. So what are you looking for there that would constitute a fail? Well, for example, if we had a, a cut which separated the fibres, that would fail. If we had fluffing or fraying of the belt, which was sufficient to obstruct its operation or weaken the belt, mm -hmm. that would fail. We'd examine the stitching, and here to see its condition. If the stitching was badly frayed, insecure, if it had been repaired, was incomplete, Right, okay. So what about all the attachments and bits on the seatbelt? The test is going to have to examine them for their condition, for fractures and so on. Um, you need to check the buckle down here for its condition, fractures, corrosion, security, and if you waggle it, you can check if there's strands or fractures in the blade, there would be a clicking sound. Okay. Then you couple it up to make sure it fastens securely, take all the slackness out of the belt in the case of this which is retractable, pull on the webbing and release it under load. So we've checked the function, fastened securely, it releases under load. Now this is a self-retracting belt. Sometimes you may need to, you know, use manual help to get the belt back in, but as long as it retracts satisfactorily, then that would be acceptable. And by satisfactorily, what I'm looking for is that, as I said, when it's coupled up, all the slackness is taken out of the belt. So for example, if it only retracted so far, that wouldn't be a reason for fail because the slack is taken out. But in a case such as this, I would have to make sure that when the seat was in its rearmost position, I could still take all the slackness out of the belt when it's coupled up. Okay. And that would be satisfactory. So we've tested the front seat belts. Is it exactly the same test for the rear? Exactly the same test. But it's worth remembering, say for example, the seat buckles have slipped under the seat base and the seat base can be lifted without any dismantling then it's okay for the tester to raise the seat base pull out the buckles and then test the belt okay well that's the seat belt just about covered isn't it yes it is but everything we've looked on here has been in very good condition yeah. i've got some examples of belts over here that you might find interesting so okay. let's have a look at them here we have an array of belts and buckles some are defective and some are not so, for example, this belt here has been very badly stitched. Is that my saying, though? <laughs> Definitely a failure. And this belt, you can see that fibres have frayed 
and separated mm -hmm. and it's obviously weakened the belt it's definitely a failure when we were examining the belt in the vehicle um, and ref I was referring to retractable belts there is a circumstance where people will fit devices to them to make them more comfortable so they don't hold them too tightly uh, maybe something as simple as this a crocodile clip mm -hmm. but they have other devices the tester must give the presenter the opportunity to remove these. So as long as you remove that and it retracts, it's okay? Yes, and the presenter must be given the opportunity to remove any device before any decision to fail is made. Now we have some buckles. On this buckle, you can see it's been repaired with tape. Somebody might think that would fail. In fact, the covers might be missing completely. Provided it fastens securely and releases under load, and therefore it's functional, it wouldn't fail. Okay. This one is a different type of belt and stalk than the one we looked at in the car, but you would still carry out the same tests on them. And on this one, you can slide back the sleeve a little bit and you could examine right. inside the stalk, provided you're not going to do any damage to the cover. And the test is entitled to do that. It doesn't mean he's dismantled at all. Okay. And then finally, we have what's referred to as the pretension buckle. Now this one is actually activated. So this flag comes out to indicate that. But once again, provided that it can fasten securely and release under load and meets all the other requirements of the test, it wouldn't fail. Okay, great. Well, there are lots of other different types of seat belts, aren't there? Yes, there are. And we'll go and have a look at some now. Okay. Okay, Tom, baby seats. Talk us through this particular situation then. Right, there's two main types of baby seat. There's those that are restrained by the adult safety belt and there's those that are restrained by being fixed directly to the vehicle itself. Okay, this one first, restrained by this adult safety belt here. How would you test this? They must not carry out any dismantling and they must test the adult seat belt to the best of their ability. There's a special notice January 2001 and it emphasises in there, for example, they must not unfasten the adult seat belt. It also tells them in that special notice that they are required to test the seat belt that's fitted to the child seat. Okay. But they cannot apply any of the pass fail criteria, so I they see. would advise the presenter. It's just advisory. Yeah. They should also advise the presenter that they haven't been able to conduct a full examination on the adult safety belt. So what about the other sort then? On the type that's bolted directly to the vehicle, so it's permanently fixed and replaces the adult seat belt, then they would apply the normal test pass-fail criteria and test it as a normal belt. Right. There's an aside to these uh, baby seats uh, that I really need to mention. It's where a baby seat is fitted and is rear-facing and there is an active airbag fitted, then the tester should advise the presenter against this practice. Now you can get um, seat belts for juniors, can't you? What's the story with those? Right. When the child restraints are fitted, and I have an example here, as you can see. They just can, bolt on. Yes, the... that's right. You can see the way the components are. Now these would bolt directly to the vehicle, and so this would be tested as a normal seat belt. In fact, the Department of the Environment, Transport and Regions has produced a useful safety leaflet on choosing and fitting child restraints for the general public, copies of which will be made available to test stations. So are there any other types of seatbelts that we should be aware of? Then? Yes, there's seatbelts that are designed for disabled persons mm -hmm. and these would be tested as, as a, a normal seatbelt. In fact, in that special notice I mentioned, it talks about different types of seatbelts uh, that are permanently fitted are treated as normal seat belts and all the pass fail criteria apply to them. Okay, is that it? Any other types of seat belts? Well, I've got something that you might like, Claire. Oh yeah, making you smile. What's that then? Well, it's something completely different. Follow me. Great. I told you I was going to show you something completely different. You did. So how's that for a seat belt? God, I bet you can have some fun in this. I wouldn't imagine you'd see too many rally cars in an MOT testing station. No, that's probably true, but if it's to be used on the road, it will have to pass an MOT. So how would testing something like this compare with the conventional seatbelts that we've already seen? All the test criteria will apply, but this is what's known as a full adult harness. That means it comprises of shoulder straps and lap belts. 
And that makes it an acceptable alternative to any of the types of seatbelts that are listed in the inspection manual. More often than not with this type of belt, the mountings go directly to the seat and so all the seat mountings would be prescribed area. On this particular vehicle, all the seatbelt mountings bolt directly to the vehicle. But at the rear, the seatbelt mountings go onto a crossbar and where that crossbar fits the mm. vehicle, then that would be prescribed area. And of course no rear seats. No rear seats, no rear seat belts needed. And this applies to light goods vehicles, unless of course they've got rear seats and windows fitted. So Tom, the only one thing I want to ask you now, is you going to take me for a spin? Uh, not today, Claire. Not a spoil sport. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's move on. So Tom, in the main we've looked at class 3, 4s and 7s, but what about 5s and 4s with more than 8 passenger seats? Specific checks need to be made on these vehicles initially. Now these can only be conducted by specifically authorised sites and this subject has been covered in a previous video called Sitting Safely. And of course with any of the previous videos we can get back copies from VI can't yes, we? Yes we can. And the number for that will be coming up at the end of this video. Now Tom, seat belts, perhaps more complicated than we first may have imagined. And there do seem to be a few grey areas, don't there? No, no grey areas. This is where the inspection manual is so important. It sets out all the details. Remember, one thing's absolutely black and white. If a seatbelt's fitted, it's got to be tested. No question about it. Simple enough, Tom. Thank you very much indeed. My Cheers. pleasure. This test rig certainly shows just how much stress a seatbelt will stand. And during an accident, that strength saves lives. That's why the MOT test message is clear. If there are seat belts fitted in a vehicle, test them. For more information, contact the MOT helpline or log on to VI's website.